Now, I hope you're hungry because I am passing it over to New York Red Bull's very own Florian Velo. Hey guys, I hope you all can see me. Just wanted to thank you guys for joining him, joining me today. And also thank you to Premio uh, for having this happening also. So here, welcome to my kitchen, uh, brand new kitchen, we just moved in. So I've been using it a lot over the, the last four weeks. Uh, today, as Connor mentioned, uh, I'm going to walk you through uh, three different dish. Uh, one typical French one, which is the quiche Lorraine. Then we'll do uh, an avocado toast, like as a snack, and then we'll cook my favorite dessert from my, my, my family's recipe, which is a chocolate lava cake. So let's get started. So for the quiche, you use the um, pie dough pie crust like this. So we'll start by putting it into the, I don't know what you call this, bakeware, I don't know. I'm not really familiar with this. Whatever you want to call it. Call it something in French. It sounds better. Sounds better. Uh, yeah. I don't know what you call it in French as well. Something to cook. Perfect. Say that in French, it will sound better. Uh, quelque chose pour cuisiner. Ouais, 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 ouais. As in there, just like, use your fork and just do some little holes in there. Red members, anyone cooking along tonight? Really simple recipe as well. And you can just add a little bit of butter as well at the bottom. Not really healthy what I'm doing today, but. That's okay. Why not? This is just fine. Guys, remember, if you have any questions along the way, fire them into the chat. I'll make sure I cover them all. Wash my hands. Cru crucial in this day and age. Very crucial. Really, really. And now we're gonna do, we're gonna start slicing the bacon because we're gonna have to cook the bacon. You can use bacon, you can use cook ham, you can use sausages, whatever you like. There's different type of quiche. This is called a quiche Lorraine, which is a typical, typical quiche in France. But you can use zucchini and goat cheese, you can do salmon and leek, you can do just leek, depending on what you like. It's, it's really easy to make and Depend on your taste, honestly. Flo, so why do we uh, why do we poke holes in the dough? Give us a little insight there. That I don't know. <laughs> okay, perfect. I always, mom, I always saw my mom doing it, so so I, I usually do it. It's like it became that. Here's the question: whose whose recipes are we cooking today besides Premios? Well, the quiche is like a French, it's typical, everybody can do it. But the lava cake is like some recipe that my mom got from a member of the family. And she yeah. usually does it when they have friends over or special occasion when I go home or something. Because she knows I love it, so. Awesome. Well, we got some red members in the comments looking forward to cooking that this weekend, it's looking like. Honestly, those dishes are super easy to make. They're not time, time consuming. So honestly, if you have time, it's go in the kitchen, take 20 minutes of your time, and you're good. Would you classify, say, like a quiche in France as uh, comfort food? Uh, not comfort food. It would be like, uh, yeah, maybe. It's just like, a, you know, you're like lazy to cook. You have eggs, cream, and then some ham in the, in the fridge. It's just super easy to make honestly just throw whatever you want in there sunday sunday for lunch you know throwing uh in the pan and a big dad's it's really really quick awesome flo who's the best cook in your family oh my mom by far yeah your mom's the big cook well she does everything my dad has a specialty okay uh he's from Brittany, so he, like he made those salty crepes that's yep. that, or galette. It's just, I don't know if any of you have tried it before, but it's really, really good. What exactly is a galette? Sorry? It's a, you said it's a crepe, a crepe? Salty crepe, and we use a different type of flour. It's like brown flour. Okay. So do you, do you usually put in it? 
Do you usually put anything in it? Yeah, you do. Um, the basic one is egg, ham, and cheese. Uh, but you can as well, like based on your taste, you can add everything you want. But this is a traditional one. Okay. So while the bacon is cooking, we're going to do the cream. So what you need is milk. So you need a cup of milk. What kind okay. of milk? What kind of milk are you using, Flo? Right now, I'm using whole milk. Whole milk. Got it. All the milks are the same to me, so I don't know. Maybe it's wrong, but and then you use heavy cream, half a cup. We gotta we gotta hide this video from uh, Tara, your nutritionist for the team, right? Oh, she actually, uh, yeah, she actually messaged me this week asking uh, if my diet was going well. Uh, kind of lied a little bit, but you look you look good. You're you're playing and you're playing very well too. I look okay, yeah. That's I, uh, something I wanted. Sorry, go ahead. Salt pepper. Go ahead. That's something I want to touch on a little bit for you personally. Uh, you know, you've been out for a look all last year, um, you know, personally to start the year, you've, you've looked incredible. Um, and yeah. the team and the teams look great. How hard is it, you know, to get a taste of being back on the field only to have this break right now? Well, it was, it felt amazing to be back. Uh, honestly, I miss the competition playing with the guys. It's unfortunate that this is happening right now, but, the health and safety of the players and the people are more important than anything else. So I just have to be patient. I've been patient for two, two years. I can wait another month and a half or two, hoping that everything's going to get better. People are not going to get sick and then everybody can stay safe and healthy. So we'll see. Awesome. So we got the eggs now, three eggs, the eggs. What are we thinking of his egg form? Red members, pretty good. Terrible. You want to see that one-handed, maybe? No, that no. I know that this is the whole egg is gonna get in there. Flo, we've got a question from Joan. Yeah. She says her family is from Lyon. I'm curious, what part of France are you from? So I was born in the southwest, so close to Spain, in a little town called Po. But I kind of traveled a lot growing up and I spent most of my life in Paris. So when people ask me where I'm from, I usually say Paris because they know where it is. But I'm a, I'm from the Basque country. So I don't know if they, you know what it is. We got another question from Gigi. What are the players doing to stay in shape? Does everyone train on their own? Uh, so we have uh, our trainers that give us a program every day that we follow. Everybody has the same program. Once you're done with the program, you can do whatever you want to do and whatever you feel you need to do. But we all stay in shape by following the, the team's program, running, doing indoor uh, cardio, most, um, strengthening core, everything that we, we, we can do to stay uh, fit. I don't know if you guys uh, are up on social media and follow Flo, but he had a great garage workout the other day. How'd you come up with that, Flo? Uh, I was like, it's been three weeks that I haven't touched the ball, and then there's so much space in my building in the garage. And I was like, uh, I need to get downstairs and, and, and start playing a little bit. So I had cones, hurdles, and I put it together. Not together, but it was just throw it down there and just start playing and do do little things it was it was fun i'm gonna do it again this week probably i heard i heard there was a couple expensive cars around you too that you had to be careful of is that just a little added pressure i like i like working under pressure so it was a it was a uh, i chose the spot because of that awesome love it cool under pressure always all right so this should be done. If it's, if you think sometimes it's maybe too liquid, you can add a little bit of flour. Uh, I'm gonna try this. This is the first time, so I do this here in my new apartment. Uh, so I hope it's gonna turn well. 
I'm kind of under pressure. I think I'm more pressured now than I'm on the game. So we got a we got another question here from uh, Julie, whose son Brandon and and her are joining from Whippany, New Jersey, my neighbors. Okay. Um, their question to you is whether whether you have any shells in that quiche mixture. In what? In your quiche mi mixture, did you get any of the eggshells in there? That, I don't know, because it's pretty thick, so you can't really see if there's shells or not. Okay. So you, I'll let you know once I try it. A little extra crunch, maybe. Yeah. So based on how you like your bacon, you like it crispy, just cook it longer. I'm not a big fan of like the crispy and dry uh, bacon. So mine's a little soft. So once you're done, just put it on the dough. So we're gonna bake it at 4.30 Fahrenheit, which I had to make a conversion because I use Celsius, which is 220 Celsius. It's a healthy amount of bacon. This is my kind of quiche. Yeah, I think uh, I think that, that's enough. There's more, but that's enough. I can touch and back on the workouts. Uh, I was fortunate enough, Red members, to work out with the team the other day, and I can attest that they are definitely good workouts. I'm a little bit out of shape since I stopped playing, so they kicked my butt. And so you can uh, rest assured that the guys are staying in great shape over there. I'm feeling very fortunate that it was uh, a virtual workout or else they would have been laughing at me. <laughs> oh, it's nice. It's always nice to have like you joining in and then having a workout all together. Yeah, just to finish, just top it with cheese. Any kind of cheese, I tried to find Gruyere. I couldn't find it. Connor, try to say Gruyere, please. Gruyere. Yeah, got it. Ouais. So, the, so we got a couple tricks along the way so far. Undercooking the bacon because it will continue to cook more. And Gruyere is the good, the good cheese to put in the quiche. And yeah, I like cheese, so I put a lot. Who doesn't? But, well, you know, French love their cheese and wine. So, All right, wait. So what, sorry, mention again the, the oven temperature. Oven temperature is 430 Fahrenheit. It's 220 Celsius. Perfect. All right. So it's still warming up right now. Uh, like another five minutes. Perfect. We got we got another question for you. Yep. All right. Sorry, just getting to it. From Daniel, my daughter, right. who is also here watching you cook, is recovering from an ACL surgery she suffered in November, and admires how you came back so strong. Any advice would be appreciated. She misses playing so much. Her New York high school varsity team also won the state championship this year. Thanks. Well, congrats on the first for the, for the championship. Uh, advice, just take your time, I think. Uh, I did not because I was really impatient and I wanted to come back and help the team, but it is really important to take your time in the recovery. Connor can attest because he got ACL first. When I, when I got hurt, I went to him and he was really helpful, gave me a lot of advice. Uh, you have to be patient. You have to do your workouts every day, pretty much, if you can do all the exercise that the doctor or the surgeon gave you and then and keep a, a positive mentality. This is the most, most, most important. If, if you start being negative or if you get down, it's, it's going to be tougher. So keep smiling, keep being positive and everything's going to be all right. Those are, those are great words. Obviously flows, you know, he's been an incredible trooper through two ACLs and uh, you know, as you, as you can see, he's come back stronger than ever. And I think, you know, that's the most important part is keeping that positive mindset and keeping a smile on your face because you know that with hard work, you can definitely come back strong. Yeah, honestly. Well, there's, you, you can attest first because like you were there before me, so. Yeah, but you came back way stronger than I did, so you can attest yeah. better than me. Yeah, well, it, it was different because I got two, so. Yeah, it flows, like, I, flows like Iron Man now. 
there there's a life before ACL, there's a life after, but it's pretty much the same. It's just you get out stronger mentally, I mean, uh, mentally, and then physically as well. So it's only positive. So we've got we've got a couple questions here. Um, yeah. For both of us, who was your favorite player growing up? I'll let you go first. You played at the club. Of course. Titi. Yes? Am I right? All right. So when did you start watching Thierry? Uh, when you went to Arsenal. I think I was old enough, like I was about... I would say seven or eight, and I was able to watch like soccer, football, as we call it in Europe, and able to understand a little bit. And then I was like, I love this player, I love this team, and I kept following him. So when I met him like two years ago, I was like a, I was like a child. I was really shy to ask him for a picture, which I have on my phone now. So <laughs> love it for me. Uh, I always, uh, I always gravitated towards the shorter guys i loved watching philip Lom growing up uh you know being an outside back and a, a smaller guy i love to watch him um but then i i also love clint mathis obviously as a big metro stars fan growing up and uh, i loved him and tab ramos all right flo we got another question how long is this quiche gonna cook the quiche is gonna cook for 30 minutes but it's gonna be based on like the visual if it's like the top is not burned but like um how do you say in english um uh, crusty this means like it's done all right so 30 minutes at least and so while it's cooking we're going to do a little snack that uh primo gave us which is an avocado toast with some sausages down sausages um yeah. Rather than cook the whole sausage, what I usually like is like open it. So like you slice it and then you you take this. How do you call this, Connor? I don't know. Uh, skin, uh, yeah. the casing, a uh, sausage casing. Yeah. So you take the you take the casing off. Yes, yeah, you sure. because we're gonna. It's gonna be easier to uh, to cut later. All right on the toast so hope you guys are writing down these tips i like the sausage are good and well i usually like uh spicy food so i usually add some um some asian chili okay have an oil but this can be really uh spicy so it based on how you like the your, your, your food spicy, like you can just add a little bit of a, a touch of chili or those sausages are already really spicy. All right, so, so these are the spicy Premio Italian sausages. Yep. Perfect. Flo, you got another question here from Nate. What is your favorite Red Bull moment? Mm. Uh, all right. Uh, it's the 4 0 win in, against New York at home. Why? Because it was my first derby. I scored. We won 4 0, and my parents were in the stand. So there's nothing better. It was probably, yeah, probably the best day. I don't think you could dream up a better first New York derby for yourself there. No, for sure. Red members, did you catch uh, the seven nothing game the other day that Red Bull broadcasted? Bring up some f fond memories there. I hope so. I tuned in. What a what a day! I, I think your your moment was incredible. What a game you had for yourself. Yeah, that was fun. But I remember that seven zero game. I was watching it, and it was just so much fun. Like goals after goals, and playing so well. Uh, well, what I, sorry, go ahead. What I use is those multi grain, uh, yeah, toast, basically. I guess this is up to up to the 
the chef's discretion. You could use whichever bread you want. Yep, exactly. Flo, you got a question from Rudy. Yep. Flo, what skills did you develop early in your career in France that help you improve your game for RB2 and RBNY? That's a, that's a good question. Um, so the, the, France, the French Academy is really all about tactical and technical. So you have a really good uh, base. Like uh, once you get into the academy, you do a lot of uh, passing drills, juggling, like just to build your uh, technicality. And then you also learn about the tactic. But once I moved here, the one thing I got that I didn't have in Europe was uh, confidence and, and trust in what I was doing. So France and the academy in France helped me build my uh, – the base, which was the technique and the tactical aspect of the game. But I got better coming here because I got more confident in my ability to play. And this is why I succeeded here. So for those of you who don't know, Flo actually also played college in locally in the area out of Ryder. Flo, did you cook a lot down at Ryder? Uh, no, because I was in the dorm. Okay. So you're on the meal plan. Yeah, meal plan. <clears throat> not, not the best food. No? No. They didn't have any quiche Laurent? No. No, it was more like fries. Pizza was the best food there. Okay. So. We might have to get you a guest, guest chef down at Ryder one of these days. Improve a little bit the food. Maybe. The, I know some of my old teammates just started a... Uh, Started making crepes for the for the university. Oh really? So they make crepes and then they deliver it to the students, which is it's pretty cool, I think. Flo, you got another rider representative in here. Stephanie says hi. She's a rider. Do you remember me? <sighs> Stephanie. I think, I think so. I think so. I think we met in one appearances, and I think we met a writer as well when I, I, I came back. So I might be wrong, but I think I, think I do remember. Let's see, Stephanie, I, I is he right face. on? So I'm better with faces than names. No, you are absolutely correct. Well done. Okay, thank you. She also asked, is that Coco? Is that what? Is that Coco? I don't know. Coco? Stephanie, are you talking on the counter? Oh, the guy who made the crepes. Is that Coco? Yeah, Coco, Matisse, and uh, Kuma. Stephanie, I might, just, uh, I might just leave you in here to, to moderate yeah. with Flo, and you guys can reminisce about Ryder. Yeah, Ryder was fun time. Two years. All right. All right let's, uh, I'm going to hit you with a couple rapid-fire questions here, Flo. Okay. How often do you cook versus eating out? Uh, lately, a lot. Yeah. Too much. Uh, when I'm bored, I just go to my uh, fridge and start eating or cooking. Okay. So it's bad. <laughs> What's your favorite restaurant in New Jersey? Uh, um, there's one, in, there's multiple in Jersey City that I really like. Uh, Takeria. Okay. And then you have uh, Annie Ramen, and you have a, a pizza place called Radza. Uh, how about New York City? I think I already know the answer to this, but it's all over your Instagram. Le Baratin, it's a French restaurant. If you have a chance, you have to go because it's fresh product. It's really good. The owner is really he's amazing. And then on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday night, like. After 10, 9 p.m., 10 p.m., you get music, people are dancing. It's really, really nice vibes, honestly. You're usually out of there and in bed by that time, so you, you've, you must have heard from people. <laughs> no, I was there for the World Cup. Oh, uh, wow. Who won that? 4-2 <laughs> against Croatia. 
Oh, there you go. Joan's, Joan's got her France scarf on. Yeah. There you I go. Be able to put the pictures up. I can't see anything. Ah, here we go. I got it. I see the scarf. Hi, guys. All right, you got a, you got a question from Pablo. What is or are the best wines to pair with the food you are cooking? All right, so this is going to be bad what I'm saying. I'm curious, but I love wine, but I don't know much about it. So I need to learn. Uh, I think with the quiche, it will be a, a red wine. Which one? I don't know. But for sure, for dinner, red is better. White is usually for fish. So since we have meat, we'll do red wine. Right. But you guys can probably teach me more about wine that I can teach you. Let's see. We got a question from Julie. Hi, can you please for, or sorry, excuse me. What is your favorite dish as a kid from Brandon, Julie's son? As a kid? Ah. As a kid, what age are we talking about? You you pick. Well, um, it's gonna be, it's gonna sound so simple, and but I really love my when my mom was making uh, pasta just with ham and butter. It was just so simple, but like that's the first thing when you say as a child. That's the first thing that popped into my mind. So that's perfect. That's ex there's nothing nothing better than a s simple meal made from your mom. Speak, speaking of which, how often do you get to speak with your family? Uh, lately, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> my dad is always like saying, if you're bored, just take, call us. So they, um, I don't know if you follow the news, but the law in France will be more strict. People have to stay home. And they've been home for like more than four weeks now. Uh, all my family is together. They're working from home. But they can only go out with... A uh, piece of paper that says that either they go to uh, grocery shopping or they go to the doctor. Otherwise, they cannot leave the house. So it's pretty crazy right now. Rudy, Rudy seems to think your French citizen might get citizenship might get revoked for that wine comment that you're not that knowledgeable on wine. I was I was gonna say it's a little bit of a sin, but I think we'll we'll work on your uh, wine education. I, I need that, honestly, it's bad, it's really bad. I think my dad would be ashamed, really. How, how tough is it uh, communicating, communicating with your family with a time difference? No, it's not, it's not hard. Usually in the morning when I wake up, I hop on a call or, what time is it right now? Four, five, four thirty. They're probably in bed right now, but usually around 2 p.m. or 3 p.m. I usually call them, just right before dinner over there or after dinner. And we get like on a 20, 30 minute call. Awesome. What, what is, uh, what's your favorite restaurant at home? There's, um, it's in Paris. It's called uh, Le Bouillon Chartier, which is, uh, it's some kind of a cantina, like a typical French cantina. It's like uh, old school where you just come in the, the way the waitress are um, the waiters and waitress are wearing like old authentic clothes. I don't know if you saw pictures. I can probably put up somewhere. And then they just take your order on the table, and then they bring you like poulet uh, frites, which is chicken and fries, like really simple dish that are really typical from France. And like you eat for like really cheap and then the atmosphere is amazing and I love this place. So I usually go every time I go back home during the winter, I usually go once or twice. That's awesome. All right, what do we got going now? Start spreading the avocado. So in the avocado, just put salt, pepper. Um, well, you can be generous on the avocado. A little bit of uh, lime. And we're gonna top that with the sausages that are done cooking and a little bit of queso. You can add some salsa as well. You can add some chili. I like spicy, so I might just add some. Flo, what's, what's one thing you miss from home, food-wise, that you can't get here? 
that I can't get here. Or maybe not not as as good as it is at home. That's good. You can get anything here anyway. It's just a matter of like price, how much you're willing to pay. But my favorite dish at home is like la raclette. I don't know if you heard of it. It's uh, a cheesy dish. It's like a family dinner during the winter where you just sit around the table, you melt your cheese, you have ham, potatoes, and you mix that together once the cheese is melted. So that's really good. And foie gras, I really miss foie gras. Talking about foie gras. What is it? I brought one from home this year, a special occasion. So I'm really happy about this one. Love it. All right, you got it. Uh, sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. Good. You got a question from Pablo's son, Augustine. What, which other language would you like to learn? Spanish. 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 I tried to. Uh, I try to like teach myself what I can. I need to be in a class and be challenged and have a teacher because I'm not, I'm not going to be able to self teach myself. And I would like to learn because we have a bunch of Spanish guys and communicating with them is good. Uh, like talking with Kaku and I feel a Christian is, is really important. And Kaku's English is really good as well. So, and I would love to learn Spanish. Bro. Awesome. All right. What kind of cheese are you putting on here? This is some goat cheese. Again, you just put whatever you want to put on it. See, I thought I thought what you were gonna say that you missed from home was the bread because I do, I can't tell you the amount of times that I would hear Flo complaining about how the bread isn't as good as home. I still have nightmares about him saying talking about bread. That's true, bread. Like it's like breakfast, lunch, dinner. And it's, if you don't have bread, but I'm not complaining about it because I live in a Portuguese neighborhood and they have a bakery around the corner right there and their bread is really, really good. All right. So I don't really miss it much anymore. So you won't hear, hear me saying anything anymore, uh, Connor. <laughs> All right, you got another question from Rudy. What are your first memories of soccer and when did you decide you wanted to play professionally? First memory, I would say, I would say like World Cup 98 when we won. Uh, I was about six years old and I'm like, I think that probably triggered my love for the, for the sport. And my first memory is like playing, I was six, I was with my best friend from school. And then since then I've never, I, I don't know if you can say that I never look back, but like I've never, my love for the game kept growing. And it's still, I still love it today. Like I feel always excited and blessed to be doing what I'm doing right now, so. That's awesome. All right, so now we're done with the snack. Let's see it. Here we go. There you well, go. And then now my favorite part, which is the dessert. I'm a big, big, big chocolate guy. I think if I was not playing sports for a living, I would have diabetes or something, fingers crossed. And I love chocolate. I have cookies in my freezer. Don't, step, don't tell that to my dietitian, but cookies, I'm going to make a, a chocolate lava cake. So it's bad, but I love it. So chocolate is your weakness. We found it out, ladies and gentlemen. It's, a weak, it's almost like a drug. I don't know if I can say this, but it, it's bad. What is, if you have to pick one dessert, is it the lava cake? Is that your favorite? Chocolate-wise, yes. But again, I love uh, a good uh, raspberry crumble or apple crumble. So I don't know. I'm, I'm a big sweet tooth, so it's it's bad. It's really bad. Love it. All right. So to start the cake, um, we gotta mix chocolate and butter. So we gotta put it together in. Let me take this. In the bowl. So 
the quantity is usually 200 grams of butter, 200 grams of sugar, 200 grams of chocolate, and 100 grams of flour, and five eggs. Uh, so I think Connor has the recipe with the metrics in ounces or cups. But it's really pretty easy. Like chocolate, butter, and sugar are the same, uh, same weight. Flour is half of the weight in five eggs. Yeah, so guys. Hot water here. And just going to put the bowl on it and just going to cook what we call bain marie, so a warm bath. For like maybe 10 minutes until it's smooth. Awesome. I was, I was afraid when, uh, when you sent me the recipe that you were actually going to get in the bath with the butter and chocolate. I couldn't find the, 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 the right word, so I was like, okay, I'm just gonna. I don't, I don't know, maybe, maybe it would have been exciting, who knows. <laughs> and then, so while this is slowly melting, you gotta mix the sugar, the flour, and the eggs. Red members, quickly, the, the recipes will be sent out as they have just put in the chat that these, these recipes and ingredients will be sent out to you guys. So don't you worry. The secret family recipes from Flo are out. Well, the real story about the recipe is that um, my uh, dad's sister was married to a chef. And my mom got the recipe from that chef. And since then, every time she has uh, she has friends over, she usually this is her go-to recipe. She mastered it. It's super easy for her now. So I usually mess it up. I might mess it up today. So we'll see. <laughs> awesome. Flo, you've got a question from Lori, who happens to be our yoga instructor. Instructor, yeah. I did yoga today, by the way. There you yeah. go. Laurie Lori will be proud. Little session this morning, 20 minutes. Laurie has a question for you. How long, how long do you bake the quiche? Thanks for teaching us to be French chefs. Quiche is 20 minutes, but again, like, let's see. Look, I'm going to show you. I'm going to take this real quick. See when it starts like burning a little bit like that, it's almost done. It says nine minutes on my timer. So it's just up to you to, to decide whenever you think it's the, the right time. Flo, you got a question from Julie. Who inspired you to start cooking and who is your favorite chef? My, my mom always cooked a lot and I never really, try something that she messed up. So it was like kind of her that made me love cooking. And then again, like it's, it's part of a culture. Like we love having a good dinner or good lunch all together, like cook together. Uh, favorite chef. <laughs> I love watching videos of Gordon Ramsay online. He's a really funny and talented chef. Uh, and I usually watch, you have top chef here, right? Yep. I watched the equivalent in France with, really talented chef as well and i watch also uh top chef but like for uh baking which i think i'm more interested in awesome give us a little uh insight on what you're doing right now right now i just mix the sugar flour and eggs until like it's like nice and smooth and now oh this is hot careful oh, this is Cut it off. And now we're just going to mix it the chocolate and the butter. This is pretty slow. You have to be patient because you don't want the chocolate to burn and to stick. Low and slow. Is that the key? It is. For the chocolate, yes. All right. You have to be gentle. Well, my favorite part is not cooking, it's after when you have to wash the dishes. Have... <laughs> it's easy, easy cleanup with the chocolate. 
Exactly. Well, I wish my dog could eat chocolate, though, then I would give it to him, but he's always like, when I'm in the kitchen, he's always like, I might eat, so. For those of you who don't know, Flo's got a dog. His name is Simba. How old is Simba, Flo? Simba is born December 19th. He's in a year and uh, five months and 10 days. What kind of dog? It's a mini birdie doodle. Really, really smart dog. So when you're trading, you have to watch because he's gonna, he can outsmart you. He might be speaking Spanish before you. Probably already is. <laughs> Flo, you got a question from John? Yeah. Cro croque madame or croque monsieur? Croque madame. Croque monsieur. So the difference between the two, I don't know if you people, like you guys know, what is a croque monsieur? Croque monsieur is like a grilled cheese with ham in it. The croque madame is a grilled cheese with ham in it and an egg on top of it. Usually you do the, you do like a, so piece of bread, you have ham, cheese, another piece of bread. You can have uh, sour cream and uh, put cheese on, on top and an egg and put it in the oven. And this is really, really good. All right, so chocolate is melted. Let's see if it's good. If you do this, I don't know if you can see, and then the line stays straight, means like it's done, it's mixed. So, and now you pour the second bowl into the first one and you mix it and that's it. You have a question from Gigi, what temp and how long will the cake cook for? So I made um, another batch yesterday so I can cook it today. Usually you cook it for, it's 170 degrees Celsius. So it's 340 or 350 Fahrenheit. You cook it for um, 10 to 12 minutes. So I did that earlier and it came like really, really gooey. So you probably have to leave it a little bit longer. I did a second one, which I left for like 20 minutes and it went a little bit too much. So I would say maybe between 15 and 60 minutes at 350. You really want that center of the cake to be really uh, liquid. So once you're done mixing both, you usually have to let it sit for like two hours minimum. You can do it like, you can prep that two days before or the day before, leave it in the fridge. And uh, let's see. And this is the one I made earlier. It's probably not, looks like a cupcake, but it's probably not gooey because it's probably overcooked. But we're gonna have it. Yeah, it's a little bit overcooked, maybe too much, but you want the centerpiece to be like really, really gooey. So, I'll try it another time. Sorry. Honestly, try this recipe. Please send it to me or do something. I want to see how it turns out to be and if you like it. There you go, fans. You got to tag Flo and all your lava cake tries. <laughs> let's, flood, let's flood his social media with lava cakes. Honestly, I would love that. Please do. Flo, you got a question from John. What's your favorite city to travel to? For away matches oh okay um well fortunately i did not travel a lot uh favorite city uh, the thing is we don't have time to do much when we're there i think la was really nice uh, it was beautiful weather uh we we stayed over there for four days uh, and then we won the match. It was even better. It's tough because like when you travel, usually for games, you just fly in, sleep, play, fly out. So don't have much time to, to walk around and see how the city is. Uh, one of my favorite city in the U.S. is probably Portland. I really love Portland. I've been there multiple times with the team and without the team. 
How about the food? Did you go anywhere to eat there? In Portland? Yeah. That's a donuts? No. <laughs> <laughs> Voodoo donuts? Exactly. Another thing he must have heard from someone through the grapevine, because definitely not on a not on a business trip. No, nah, never on a business trip. Or after. If we win the game, maybe after, but not before. Never. Hey, Flo, Claire wants to see Simba. Simba, come here. Come on. Oh. Here is. Everyone say hello to Simba. Right. He, he doesn't know where to look at it because there's so much food on the... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Licking his lips. How, how happy is Simba to have you home all day now? Uh... He's needy, I'm gonna say that. He looks cute, don't get fooled by that. Uh, he's really needy, he always cries because he wants to play. He wants to go out, he wants to eat a lot. So, but well, I'm sure he's happy. Every time, uh, every time I, I wake up or every time we go out, I'm just really, really happy to be there, so. Awesome. Julie has a question for you. She says, have you ever heard of Florian Bellinger, the macaroon guy? Brandon likes macaroons a lot. No, the macarons are really good. They're not hard to make as well. Have you made them before? Yeah. And I messed it up multiple times before I made one good batch. So maybe, maybe this might be a series of flow cooking desserts. Who knows? Uh, that could be fun. Stay I tuned. I think uh, it would just try new things and. Yeah, and I love baking and more eating than baking, but I think that could be fun. All right. That is done. Oof. Yeah? Is that a good oof or a bad oof? It's uh, a good oof, I think. Wow. All right. Yeah, I think it's good. Is that the jiggle test? It is. Ooh. So if it's too jiggly, it's got to go in more? You can just poke it and see. Yeah, we, I think it's good. Maybe a little bit, like five more, five or ten more minutes. All right. Um, Rudy, Rudy says that you can call your jiggle test. Just go with the flow. Yes, I like that. We'll, we'll do that. You can call Rudy. I'm going to add a little bit more time in there. Hey, Flo, Carlo wants to know what, what your favorite kind of bread is. And she goes to a Portuguese bakery as well. So I don't know the name. I just point. <laughs> I'm not even going to try to pronounce this. Uh, but if you go in the comments, uh, yeah. I'll give it a shot. I'll give it a shot. Pau da Avo. How, how'd I do? Uh, I didn't understand anything, but I look at the comment and take notes and I'll ask next time I go to the bakery. All right. She said I was very close. So I don't know the names and they all speak Portuguese, Brazilian, like, and I'm like just pointing at the bread. So, but in France, I usually get a, well, you have the regular baguette. Right. Well, you have another one called uh, Bagatelle, which is the name as well of a restaurant in the city, but. It's like more of like a crusty with wall grain bread. It's really good. Circling back to a couple of people's questions that I missed. Uh, Daniel wants to know where you live. I live by the stadium. I like being close to the office. So I moved to the state by the stadium. Love it. And then Scarly wants to know how many tattoos do you have? One, two, that's it. What, what do we got there? So, you hear you have a lion, or you have a lioness here, like half, and the other half is a lion. So it kind of represent my mom and dad. And in the bag you have like, people will call that a Christmas tree, uh, but it's a blue, it's a blue Christmas tree. It was uh, my grandparents' tree when, uh, so when I was born, they planted that tree in the yard. So it's kind of represent growth and, and kind of my life. So that's what I got that. Beautiful, beautiful meaning there. 
Let's see, Julie Julie tried to make macarons once, but it failed. Any any tips for Julie? I try again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where you messed it up, but you have to try again. Honestly, right. baking is a lot of uh, math. It's uh, the right doughs, the right grams. It's it's. If you don't like math, it's tough to like baking, but it's you have to be really precise. So, but the more you try, the better you're gonna get. It's an art for sure. Yeah. And, and I'm not saying it's good. I'm just I've been doing it like multiple times, and I do what I'm. I know I can cook. So, awesome, awesome. We uh, want to know: Have you picked up any hobbies along the way during this time? Along the way, hobbies. I've been trying to read a lot. Uh, I'm uh, slow and I don't read a lot, but I've been trying to stay away from Netflix and uh, and like watching TV and playing video games, which has been working so far. Uh, I want to get back to drawing as well. So I don't know. We have plenty more times coming, so I think uh, I think I'll be able to figure something out. Awesome. Any good books you've read? I'm really into psychology. I think uh, this this is the reason why I got through those two ACLs. Uh, the last book I finished like a couple days ago was uh, a French book, which is a f fiction based on uh, on a true story about World War II. I'm really passionate about World War II. I probably watch all those documentaries on Netflix, uh, and it's about a couple of uh, Austrian Jews that are trying to uh, fly out of the country and get away from the Nazi regime, and and it's pretty pretty intense, honestly. All right, that's awesome. A lot of a lot of history in France, especially World War Two, so. I'm sure you uh, when you go home there's a lot of a lot of history for you to soak up yeah i was in um i was in normandy during uh new year's eve and i almost stopped at the normandy beaches but i didn't have time which i really want to do again i already did it but it's this place is full of history it's pretty crazy i don't know if any of you have been but it's breathtaking when you walk into that cemetery and then walk along the beach to just imagine those people on d-day it just it just it's crazy definitely definitely pretty wild how uh how have you guys been doing any team bonding at all uh yeah we have a uh, group chats every week like we set up group chats like with uh with two to three players uh those groups changes every week so it's it's good to catch up but as Connor mentioned before we do uh, workouts together like two to three times a week so we get to speak to each other and see how everybody's doing so it's good to stay in touch I think awesome Cliff has a question where where would you go on your ideal vacation oh, it's tough it's tough I love traveling uh, I travel every every off season it's, um, I really want to go to Bali. That's in Asia. Like, I want to go Asia or South America. I think in South America, I want to go to Peru. Uh, I don't know. There's so many places I want to visit. Last, last winter, I went backpacking on my own for 10 days in three different cities, and that was so much fun. I think I'll do it again, but Where'd there you go? so many places I want to go to. Where? Uh, let everyone know where you went backpacking. Uh, I went to, so I started in Budapest for three days. And then I went to Copenhagen for five. And then I went oh, for four. And then I went to uh, Prague for three days. Awesome. How's that quiche coming along? I think it's pretty, I think it's done. Yeah. All right, perfect. give our red members uh, a view of the final product. 
didn't change much from last time, but it's probably less uh, Beautiful. There you go. Quiche Laurent. How's it look? It looks good. I think we're going to let it like cool a little bit so it gets a bit hard. And we be good. Perfect. I'll, uh, one more question before we're going to wrap up. Do you have any meaning behind your number, number 22, or do you just like the number? Um, there's no real meaning. It's just that this is the number I got when I moved to the United States, when I went to Ryder. And this is just, to me, a symbol of like achieving what I've uh, always dreamed about. It's just, I think I played my best soccer at Ryder because I was uh, playing free. I was not really thinking about it. And that, that number is stayed and I'm like I want to I want to keep it so I don't care if 7 or 11 even those are nice numbers are available I always keep it awesome all right well let's give a little uh, a view of all the all the food together there why don't you pop out the uh, avocado toast don't touch that it's hot <laughs> the toast and then unfortunately the The cake. Well, now I have a lot of food to eat, so. There you go. Somebody wants to join. I don't know if you can see properly. I'm gonna take this. It's gonna be spare. All right, now you have the quiche right there. The toast and then the, not lava cake, but cake. It's all right. Lava yeah. hardens at times too, you know? The, the lava is here. And, and then that's it. Awesome. Well, Flo, we, we really next do another one. I'll do, uh, I don't know. That's a good. You have, you, have, you have time to think about it. We appreciate you doing this tonight, Flo. I don't know if you have any last words for our Red members tonight. Yes, uh, I think I hope, I hope you had fun. Uh, I would have loved to do that in person with you guys. I hope we'll be able to do it. But for now, just I hope you guys are safe, stay healthy, stay home, and then uh, I hope to see you soon. I hope we can we can resume uh, the season uh, once everything is clear, everybody is healthy, and then and yeah, thank you again for joining me in in my kitchen and cooking. So I hope we can see you next time. Awesome. Red members, thanks so much for tuning in tonight's New York Rebels virtual player appearance. Thank you to our partner, Premio, for connecting us with you and also the awesome avocado toast recipe. Thank you, Flo. Thank you, Simba. Thank you, the Valo family, for the delicious recipes. And we hope you guys uh, come back for more of our virtual player appearances. Be healthy and be safe. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Thank you, guys. Have a good night.